Hey guys, Zar here. Hope all is well. It's 4.36 a.m. Nice and early here in the New York zone. I'm going to be speaking fairly uh, quietly. Hopefully you can hear what I'm saying uh, since most of the world here is still very much asleep. Again, 4.36 a.m. But I'm watching the Dow right now and the Three Sisters as always. You can see that we've uh, put in a new uh, resistance zone here during the, uh, the London session. Uh, U uh, U.S. is actually closed today and uh, with a holiday, but I may take a trade here uh, early in the morning and then be done for the day. We'll see. But this is the Dow, again, uh, having driven down through uh, the overnight and Asia. It's Sunday night. Today is Monday. And then uh, putting in this new uh, area here. I'm flipping over to the three-minute chart here, guys, and placing a sell stop order right here first trade of the week first trade of the day and uh, this is a live order now guys uh, just below you see that there placing my stop just above at 20 points and i'm going to be looking for 25 points here uh, in this quiet uh, london session or uk session europe session even i me be waiting here now for to be brought into this I am watching the three sisters, sisters, pardon me, I'll show this to you. Uh, you can see that the NASDAQ is trading below VWAP. S&P is trading below VWAP. The Dow is actually holding up a little bit here. And so I'm wondering if these two can bring this one in line. We'll see. So in a way, this is uh, shorting the strongest, not by, not by much. You'll see the structure is actually very much the same. Uh, driving up in the early or the opening minutes of um, of the UK session. Same thing on the S&P and same thing on the Dow. Here we go, guys. And triggered in. I'm now in the Dow here. Just going to make sure my brackets are okay on my own platform here. And yes, we're fine. Oh, I was on the one minute chart here on my platform. And this is the three. Yep, that's okay. So I've been triggered in here, no follow through. It's probably not a great sign, but I'm okay with it. It is 4.39, so we're an hour and 39 minutes into the European session. Copy. is a zone reversal trade guys and in a way it's also a trend continuation trade I'll show you what I mean so there's a big zone reversal up here but then there's an impulse wave down you can even say impulse corrective impulse corrective with the uh, with an eye towards seeing an impulse down and I'm not suggesting this thing's going to fly all the way down to here I don't need it to. I'm just looking for those 25 points right here. Just a uh, a resumption of this down move that we had coming through the uh, mid to later part or latter part of the New York session on Friday. Down. Now this kind of pulling back like an, a bow, pulling back a bow and arrow, and pulling back rejection wick up here with some momentum continuing down south here. We'll see if that's going to happen. I'll put you on pause for now, guys, and we'll wait for this to play out. Pause now. And we're trying to make a little bit of a move down here, but uh, being a little quiet. I remember 
Again, North America is closed today. Actually, I think Canada might be open today, but uh, the U.S. is is very much closed. And it's going to cause a little bit of... Um, I mean, obviously, today I will not be trading the U.S. session. But here in the U.K. session, this is obviously a U.S. index, and Dow. We're short the Dow. But this is very much based on international uh, futures players right now and the European uh, players. It wouldn't be much difference in terms of liquidity from a normal day. But as we approach the New York open and, uh, and of course, the New York session, it'll get very quiet and I will not be taking trades on the indexes today or indices today. Pushing down a little bit, I will uh, remind you that the daily is bearish as well. So as usual, multi time frame confirmation here or confluence. You'll see that we have rejected on Friday. Nice big rejection wick drove down. Here we are on Monday having broken Friday's low. That's a bearish indicator, obviously. Uh, hopefully it's obvious, uh, certainly to those who have been trading for a while. And then we have a, and we're also in the, have a blue body right now on this daily candle. And blue is a down candle for me, white is up. So this is a bearish daily. And now we have this pullback, as I mentioned, uh, after this impulse down overnight and into the Asian session, pullback, rejection, and now to drive down and then uh, entering here on the on the three minute chart. Uh, but really entering based on the 30 minute break of the prior candle. Quite simple. When I say simple, I mean easy, easy to see. It'll be very clear after the fact. I know I'm many will say that I'm, I'm making this look easy and I am making it look easy. The, the difficult part is managing psychology, the real game. Uh, which is the game of impulse control as you can see on the bottom of the screen is a reason I have that that line that phrase on my screen at all times is to remind me of what the real game is and back on pause guys and we'll wait for this to play out pause And put a new low here for the move. Struggling a little bit. That's okay. Just remaining cool, calm, and collected. It's just a trade. In a series of thousands of trades, potentially. In my case, tens of thousands of trades over the years. There was a time when I was trading uh, Forex in particular, I would sometimes trade 100 to 120 times a day. Now something that seems largely ridiculous to me, you can imagine that if you're trading 100 times a day, um, you know, in a month, you know, it's 500 times a week. Uh, 2,000 trades in a month. So you can see why tens of thousands of trades over a 35 plus year trading career is not an exaggeration by any stretch. I now trade an average of one to three times a day or take one to three trades a day. A session, I should say. Sometimes I trade the London session like I am today in the New York session. So it might be one to three trades in London and one to three trades in in uh, in the US. And when VIX is over 20, I'll often take the full three trades, for instance, occasionally four or five trades in a session. Um, there was a day last week where I had six trades in the day, but that was both the London session and the New York. As a matter of fact, I think it was three and three. So uh, kind of like on my average, for each session but these days I'm trying to focus mostly on the New York session and shift my sleeping schedule over to that of a normal human being <laughs> after many many years but it's difficult this morning I was up at uh, 223 to be precise uh, a.m. 
New York time. And so I, the first thing I do, obviously, is grab a cup of coffee and uh, turn on my charts and see what the markets are telling me, even though today is a New York holiday. And so when I see a setup like this, I typically will take it when it's optimal, clean traffic and all those important things. Long list of criteria that I look for before entering a trade, but I'll flip the coin, call heads, and the majority of the time it will land on heads because my coin is weighted to heads. If it looks like it's going to land on tails, then I may uh, cut my loss short, getting out at break even, for instance. So it's a no loss trade, but it's not a winning trade. Uh, or I uh, take a, a truncated loss. In other words, if I had moved my my stop, for instance, to half R, and it's only half of um, uh, a, uh, what am I looking at, component of risk, if you will, uh, the, the one I started with, or I will take the full loss, and that's just part of trading. But uh, because I'm being so choosy, instead of trading 100 times a day, or even 10 or 15 or 20 times a day, I'm only taking one to three trades a day. I'm truly looking for the most optimal setup, so with a very high win rate. Um, but that's the way to do it. Trade infrequently in only the most stellar setups. That's how you can have a high win rate. And high win rate is not everything, by the way. I make more money in my swing trading than I do in my day trading. But my win rate in swing trading is probably, I don't know, 65%. Um, where here it's probably over 90%, I would say. Maybe even higher. But just to show you that win rate is not everything. But it does, um, it does help from an emotional and... and mental game standpoint and the older you get the more I think that becomes a critical piece uh, of the puzzle at least for me it has my risk aversion is significantly higher now than it's ever been even though I'm a better trader now than I've ever been so there's almost an inverse relationship there I think and it has to do with aging it's a fairly uh, standard pattern that I've seen in other traders too over the years traders big and small by the way All right, put you back on pause now, guys, and I'll bring you back. sleepy right now talking about the markets and I suppose I am a little bit too <laughs> I'm just gonna tighten my stop now guys I'm gonna bring it down to above this wick you see that there let me just take it back for a moment you'll remember that I was risking 20 points now risking 15 it would be a 0.75 R instead of 1 R risk risking 15 to make 25 Pause. We're back, guys. You can see we've got a little bit of a pullback here and just tapping into that 20 EMA. Hopefully, rejecting from there, but we'll see. Whatever happens, happens. It's very kind of sluggish right now. Let's take a look at the three sisters, shall we? Yeah, not much going on, kind of sideways. It is that time of day, 5.12 a.m. New York time. So we're two hours and 12 minutes into the European session here. I am short the Dow at VWAP. Whereas the NASDAQ and S&P are below VWAP, volume weighted average price. Looking for these two to weigh on the Dow to pull it, back, pull it down here. But uh, it's not being that uh, successful yet. 
We were looking fine for a while there. I don't love this flipping of the um, the 30 minute to a white body. See that? Ideally, that would stay blue, but it has not. Let's see if we can get it to flip blue again. Back on pause. Just being patient here. We flipped blue again here on the 30 minute. That's important. We'll see if we can break this now and continue down. I apologize for the whispering, guys. I know I'm, I'm not actually whispering, but speaking quietly. Uh, hopefully you understand that I'm trying to uh, preserve the sleep quality of those around me. <laughs> actually a big believer in, in the importance of sleep. Didn't always feel that way, but uh, having done a deep dive on on uh, the science of sleep and sleep architecture and I now believe it's an incredibly important thing to our mental, emotional and physical health. Driving down here a little bit, we're about to make a new low, trying to, there it is, is the new low and I would need this one more big push to hit our goal of 25 points. Being rejected there, kind of in this area. There are some players here that are defending that area. That's fine. Let me show you the three sisters in the meantime. You can see that. Oh, we got some firmness here on on the NASDAQ and the S&P. That's not going to help the trade. You see here on the Dow. slim participation here you can see all these gaps and kind of uh, sloppy uh, candle action here and Nasdaq always has the smoothest action around this time out of the three back on pause Another new low for the move, a bit sluggish. I'm very keenly aware of what's, how we're not being supported here by the, um, by the NASDAQ and the S&P. Fortunately, the Dow is now behaving well, for a moment there the weakest, but this is not making me overly optimistic. I always like to see a, uh, an agreement or confirmation or confluence between the three sisters. And when I don't see that, don't have as much confidence in the outcome, but uh, so far so good. Alright guys, I'm going to take this opportunity to move my stop to break even. I'm not liking the lack of support, so break even now. Break even now. Extremely high chance of being stopped out of break even, and that's okay. On a day when the US market is closed and it, we're not getting the support of the, the other sisters, um, I don't want to be taking a chance on this anymore. It was fine when we're having some support from the uh, 
the bearish movement on the other two. But this is how we preserve capital, guys, and maintain a high win rate, or I should say a high no-lose rate. And that means break-evens as often as necessary. And I'm very cool with that. This was a nice entry. Could have, uh, could have taken 20 points here and been very satisfied with that. See, yeah, 20 points, but uh, that's okay. 25 point target it was very reasonable on this it still is but stop is at break even here we go guys Given what I'm seeing on the three sisters, I think this is going to be taken out right about now on the break even. Let's see. You can see how sleepy. Yep, there it is. And out, guys. All right, out break even. Thank you for joining me. 21 minute video just to get a break even, but that happens. First trade of the day, first trade of the week. I probably won't trade again today given that we're moving closer towards pre-New York and New York is closed today. Have an amazing week, guys. Thank you for your support. Thank you for clicking that like button if you don't mind. If you're even remotely uh, like what I'm doing here, um, clicking that button would be an awesome gesture and apparently it helps the algorithm. So thank you so much. Have a good one. We will talk soon. Take care.